Today we're going to be taking a look at the Titan Premier Disc Brake Kit. Offering a 10 inch hub and rotor with the 5 on 4.5 bolt pattern and the decrement finish. These have been designed for use with 3,500 pound capacity axles. Part number is T2HRCM10DAC. Now the biggest advantage to going from, well this, this trailer didn't have any brakes to start with, but either adding brakes to a trailer that doesn't have them or upgrading from the drum style are going to be superior braking performance. Disc brakes work much more effectively than what drum brakes do. This is going to add a huge safety factor to your system, give you a lot more braking power back here, and get everything slowed down much more quickly than what you would with a standard drum brake setup. Now the system's designed to work on your 3,500 pound axles, and it's going to use a four bolt brake flange here on the back. The rotor diameter is going to be nine and three quarters of an inch. As you can see, it is a ventilated rotor, so we're going to quickly dissipate the heat that builds up during braking. That's going to help to prolong the life of our system, and it's also going to help maintain that braking force. The great advantage to having disc brakes over the drum style brakes are you're going to be your highway braking performance. At highway speeds, the disc brakes have the same amount of braking force as they would at low speeds. Whereas with drum brakes, they tend to lose their effectiveness at the higher speeds. Then we've got plating on the rotor and also on the caliper that's going to help prevent any kind of corrosion or rusting. These marine applications that can really come in handy. Now to begin our installation, we need to get our old hub assembly off of the trailer. So we're going to take our lug nuts off and wheel and tire first. Now we'll knock the dust cap off the end, typically a rubber mallet. It's going to be your best bet. Just kind of turn your hub as you tap and it'll come off. Now we want to clear some of the grease out of the way there and expose the cotter pin. With a pair of needle nose, pull those down straight. You get a hold of it up here and pull it on out. If it's stubborn, side cutters will give you a little bit better bite on it. But if you have to use side cutters, you want to get a replacement cotter pin to go back in. On this particular application, there's just a little cap that goes over the nut to keep it from backing out. So we'll take that off. Then we can use some slip joint pliers and we'll remove the nut in behind there. Now all the stuff we've just taken off, we're going to hang on to with the exception of the dust cap for the hub, but we want to hang on to the nut here, we want to hang on to the washer behind it, and that keeper for the nut. Like I said, we'll have to replace the cotter. And if we pull out just a little bit on the hub there, we'll see our bearing in behind there, but in front of that there's this little washer. We're going to hang on to that as well. Now we can take the inner outer bearing hub and seal off and set it aside. We'll just clean all the old grease off the spindle. Now you want to look on your surfaces here, the flat surfaces, for any kind of damage, any kind of dents, any kind of anything that shows that you've had bearing failure in the past. You can see this one's nice and smooth on both the surfaces here. Up here where our seal goes is nice and smooth and out here, so it's in good shape. No worries at all in putting this one back together. Now the only place there's going to be old grease left in this setup is inside the spindle. This is an easy loop spindle. So I'm going to use some marine grease and I'm going to pump that old grease out of there as well. We'll just do that until it's the same color as our blue marine grease. Now since we'll be using bearing buddies instead of the typical easy loop, we'll take the grease zerk out of each end. We'll use a 5 16 inch socket or ratchet and get those removed. Next we'll get our caliper brackets put into place. Now this trailer of course didn't have brakes to start with so we need to provide our own hardware to attach these. We're going to use part number BRKH10A and that's going to give us a bolt, a lock washer, and nut eight times so we'll have enough to do both the passenger side and the driver side. We'll pass those through and put the lock washer on and then our nut. 
Now if you look on the flange, you'll see those little tabs that stick out. That's going to be our centering rings. So we want to make sure that we have the caliper bracket lined up on those, and then we'll get it tightened down. We'll snug it up and then torque it down. For the bolt side, you'll use a 5 8 For the nut, you'll need an 11 16 With that one attached, we can head over to the other side and we'll repeat the same process. Now we're ready to load up our disc with the bearings and the seals that we'll need. The inner bearing, we're going to put it on the back side of the disc here, away from the lug nuts. It sits right in here on a race located inside. And those two angles are going to match up. With use, they marry together, and that's going to give us our rolling surface. Now we want to get these packed with grease before we put them in there. This is a marine application, so we're going to be using marine style grease. If it's just a regular application, non-marine, you can use just a high speed grease. Go, I always start on the larger side. It's a little gap between the inside and the outside there. We're going to shove grease up into that gap until we see it coming out of the top. Now if you have a bearing packer or something like that, you can use that as well. And we'll want to do that until we see it come out of the top there. You can see those couple beads of grease. That means the grease has gone all the way through the bearing. Now we'll just rotate it a little bit and continue that all the way around. And we're going to do that for both of our inner bearings. And we'll show you how to put in the seals. Now we'll just slide that in. Now to get our seal in place, we're going to place it on the back side of our disc. And then we're going to use either a seal driver, like this one. This is part number PTW83020 gives you several different sizes. We're going to use the second to largest. Or have a block of wood that's got a nice flush end on it. Just want to set it down on there and then start driving your seal evenly down in. Now the block of wood makes it a little more difficult to see. Just want to get the seal driver lined up there. Start getting our seal in place. And have that so that it's flush with the back side of our disc there. We'll do the same thing for our other one. Now we'll slide that right on our spindle. Make sure it goes in, you feel the stop point there. Now we can pack our outer bearing. Now the outer bearing, we'll pack it just the same way we did on the inners. Now our outer bearing, it's gonna slide in. You want that to go around the spindle. Now just avoid getting any grease on the disc surface itself. We have that in there. We want to put our washer back in. See that little flat spot that goes to the flat side of the spindle. And we're going to thread our nut back on. And we're going to tighten that down. We want to seat our bearings in there. And you'll feel the tension on the disc increase. Once you've felt that, I'm going to back off just a touch. Then you need to pull in and out. That's just going to ensure that you don't have any end play. And as long as that's nice and secure, put our keeper over the nut and place in our cotter pin. Now you can reuse your cotter pins if they came out properly. If not, just replace them with a new one. Now we can go to the other side and do that exact same thing. Now we'll get our calipers installed. As you can see, they're going to be preloaded with the pads. These are really nice automotive grade pad. As you can see, they're going to have a chamfered edge on each side. That's to help any of that chatter that we sometimes get which leads to noise. Also, they're going to be slotted there, again, to help with the noise and allow any dust out of there that might be produced. These are a ceramic pad, so they're going to give you great stopping power. Now we'll get our calipers installed to the brackets using the caliper bolts. Now depending on your trailer setup, the length between that hole and the frame of the trailer might not allow you to slide it in there. If that's the case, what I'm going to do is just remove the bottom shackle bolt here. So we can lower that axle down a little bit, get our caliper put in place, and then we'll raise it right back up into position. Now we've got that supported from underneath both sides. Now we just lower that down. It'll allow that to come down a little bit. We'll get in there and attach our hardware. 
Now we'll slide our caliper over. We'll line up the holes in the calipers with the threaded holes in the back of the bracket. Another thing you want to keep in mind is the direction that the fitting comes off of the back of the caliper. Originally this caliper had a 90 degree fitting. That would put our brake hose right over here and it would be susceptible to hitting the frame. So what we've done is we've replaced this. Now these fittings come in three different configurations, either a 90, a 45, or a straight. We're using a straight. Your trailer might need a 45. It might be able to use the 90. So just be sure you have clearance between where that brake line is going to come out in the frame of the trailer. The fitting that you need is a 1 8 MPT to a 3 16 inch flare. Now we'll do the same thing for the other side and get our axle raised back into position. Now we've got our rubber line ran up here. We're going to get this attached to the fitting there in the back of the caliper. Just want to slide in the tube and then thread in the flange behind it. Then with the 3 8 we'll be able to tighten that up. Now with all of our lines hooked up, we'll remove the cap on top of the actuator and we'll fill up the reservoir with dot three or four brake fluid. You want to be sure to use fresh brake fluid so it hasn't had any opportunities to soak up any moisture. Once that's full, we'll put our cap back on and we need to manually operate the actuator here at the front. Now to operate the actuator, you want some form of lever and you're gonna place that lever in your safety chains. You hook them together. And if we bring that up, you can see we can push in on our lever. That'll slide our coupler to slide into the actuator and it's just like pumping the brakes. Now with the help of an extra set of hands up front, we'll wanna pull the cap off the top bleeder screw now we'll have them hold the pressure on our actuator while we loosen our bleeder screw. When we do that, brake fluid is gonna come out, so we recommend using a bottle with a hose attached to it. And there's a little bit of brake fluid in the bottom you can see there, that's just so we can see the air coming out. At a point, the air is gonna quit coming out and it's just gonna be brake fluid. That means this caliper will be bled. We're starting the furthest from the actuator in the brake line routing, so we'll do the passenger side, then the driver's side. We just place that right over the top of that bleeder screw and then your brake fluid should go in the bottle. Now you see some of the fluid starting to come out. You just want to go a couple times and ensure that you don't have any air bubbles at all that come through. Now with everything properly bled, you're going to put your bleeder's cap back on the screw there. Make sure your reservoir is topped off and you're ready to put your tires back on. And that's going to complete our look at the Titan Premier Disc Brake Kit, part number T2HRCM10DAC.